Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to SIBB event called IT Shortage Ideas How to Win This Battle, organized in cooperation with our partners, Talent Place, with their client curated content from Canada, and Conscientia. So, my name is Vlad, and I will be your host today. And a few words about SIBB. So, SIBB is Digital Business Association, Berlin Brandenburg. And one of our goal is tighten cooperation and knowledge exchange between IT businesses from the Berlin and Brandenburg. We cooperate as well with Russia, Poland, and USA. So, and the first speaker today will be Vincent Pearson. Uh, he represents a company called Conscientia, and he will talk about the perspective of nearshoring. Dear Vincent, the stage is yours. <laughs> okay, thanks very much. A very grandiose opening, I have to say. Thank you for that. Um, good afternoon, everybody. As Vlad has already said, firstly, can uh, everybody hear me and see me? It's okay. I'm going to take that as a yes. Um, my name is Vince. I'm a Brit. I live in Berlin, and I represent, uh, as has been mentioned, a Danish company called Consensia. Um, and Consensia, since 2006, has been in the business of uh, what we call nearshoring. So we provide uh, software development capacity, which is sourced and located in Eastern Europe. Um, and one of the development centers that we have is in Warsaw, um, which is uh, half of the background to, to this um, discussion today. So um, we're a member of SIBB, and occasionally we meet up and discuss uh, relevant topics or, or hot topics, what everybody's talking about. Um, and this particular topic that Vlad had just mentioned now, IT skill shortage, is something that is plaguing everybody. It's, uh, uh, it's a major problem, not just, in, not just in Berlin, Brandenburg, Germany, but also in, in all of the other countries I've mentioned, Denmark, where we're based, the UK, where I'm from. Um, and I wanted to uh, profile uh, one of the solutions uh, that is available that I think is a very good solution. Um, and it's available amongst, uh, amongst other places also uh, in Poland. So um, I'd like to get up my, share my screen with you now and uh, run through a presentation. I'm still pr proceeding on the assumption that everybody can hear me. Um, so just, just to kick off with, I mean, I, I sort of wanted to quantify this, this problem per se, how big is it? And it is, it is huge. Um, the IT industry is marching ahead in, in Germany like never before, um, and it's used up the entire IT skill pool that's available. Um, at, the end of 20, uh, at the end of 2020, COVID, uh, sorry, not COVID, Bitcom, which is a well-respected German forum which monitors uh, the IT industry, reported that 86,000 open positions across the country. And that's actually gone down the year before, before COVID, is 124,000. And when you think about that a little bit, you know, the average salary in IT in Germany is 62,000 euros. Um, and I, I tried to find the turnover per employee. I couldn't find something specific for IT, but this, this is believable because there are industries that are, uh, that are reporting over 350,000 euros a year turnover, sales volume per um, headcount. So if you take 200,000, which is, uh, I think, conservative, we're talking about opportunity costs of something around 25 billion, which are going missing. So it's, it's obviously uh, a huge problem. Uh, if you compare that to the rest of Europe, this is a Eurostat um, statistic that, that was published in a Danish journal not too long ago. You see here's Germany. You have the percentage of the workforce which is based in IT, and it's not so high comparatively, like around 4% there. But up the top, there you see the percentage of companies in IT who are reporting problems finding the skills that they need, and that's up at 70%, which is enormous. Um, at the moment, you can talk in Germany about three possible solutions. Import the talent. There is a blue card scheme, and it is possible, um, and it may be a good solution for some people. It takes up a lot of time. It's bureaucratic and perhaps expensive, um, but it exists. Uh, there are lots and lots of schemes to get people trained in writing code or in other IT skills, but again, uh, this will come to fruition in at least three years from today, if not longer. 
Um, and there's the third option, the one that more and more people are beginning to look at, and the one that I want to particularly talk about in respect of Holland, of, of Poland, and that is go where the talent is. So <laughs> where might that be? Um, if you took a map of Europe and drew a line north-south right down the middle and then looked at the right-hand side, which is Eastern Europe, what you'd find is that uh, all of these countries are blessed with an economic heritage, with a, um, an educational heritage, which dates back to uh, former years where um, importance was placed mostly on STEM subjects. Uh, I've worked and lived in the former Soviet Union. I've worked a lot in Poland and not just in IT, in many forms of engineering. I can tell you that the, the standard of education and the quality of, uh, let's say, engineering know-how in that part of the world is really, really top of the pile. Uh, added to that, you have um, the, 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 the volume, not just the quality, but the volume, these, the, the educational institutions in all that part of the world are putting out people in huge amounts every year, very, very well qualified people. Um, and because of economic disparities, it uh, it's like has a magnetic effect, obviously, to work for companies who are, who are based in the, in the west of Europe or in the United States and Canada. Um, so this is just uh, some numbers about the amount of professional developers in Poland, and it's, it's really serious numbers here. And these people are available. These are freelancers, most often working, freelancers or, or, um, or employees, most often working for companies who are not themselves based in Poland. Um, a little bit about the sourcing hub. So the spread is quite good throughout the whole of Poland. I think that the, my colleagues from uh, the other company are going to make a, a presentation with a little bit more of the demographics, so I'll skip over this quite quickly. Um, interesting to note uh, for, for German companies, if there are any of, the, of you out there, is this. Um, Germany is using a tiny amount of this huge skill source that's available. The USA is ahead of everybody. Um, even tiny, where are we, the Nordic countries there are using more than, than Germany, which is a bit um, ironic because Poland is right next door. We're in Ber I'm in Berlin at the moment, so I can drive to Poland in less than an hour. Um, if you have a huge problem like that, an apparent solution, then of course there must be a reason why, and that, that's particularly what I want to, to think about today, what's the problem? Um, I'm out and about in the field all the time talking to people, and companies highlight um, particular issues, the things that, let's say, deter them from, from attempting to use this uh, as a solution. One is the process of onboarding. So how can I get, if, if, a, if a team is based in another country, how can I overcome my own legacy systems, poor documentation? How can I ensure a good knowledge transfer um, to get a team on board working for me that's integrated, that understands my business goals and all the rest of it and works like an in-house team? It's a valid question. Uh, team management, who's in control? Can I influence team stability? Uh, anybody who works in the software environment understands the importance of domain knowledge. When, if, when team members come and go, it causes problems. Team stability is really important, and, and I would say that uh, if I were asked to use one adjective to describe what is most important to all of the German businesses I know, I would say stability above everything else. Communication is an issue, uh, and mutual, which is covered also by mutual understanding. This is, uh, to some extent, a cultural question. Um, security, meaning data security and IP rights. They worry many people, GDPR, amongst other things. Um, and if I were to sum that up in one word, I would say control. I think the thing that, that worries uh, companies in Germany about using this kind of thing is the feeling um, or, or doubts about whether they can be in control on all these parameters all the time. That, in a sense, is, is the question. Um, so it's a bit like, can you have your cake and eat it? So the, these three issues <clears throat> um, have long ago been solved by not just our company, but by many, many companies. A good contemporary supplier of nearshoring skills um, is, is a company that's developed with the market and has tuned its offer based on experience and understanding of what's necessary. What are the laws of physics in software development? What do companies want? What do they need? And these things are all available. Um, and I would suggest to, to tackle those uh, the questions that were on the previous slide, we just look through 
um, the process of cooperation in a chronological way. So it begins with the recruitment, then you have the onboarding knowledge transfer, and then the question of retention. Um, a modern company, if you go to them looking for software developers, will recruit individually. Um, quite often, you 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 hear that, uh, or you, you you hear the assumption that that there are two hundred, let's say, developers. They work for a company. You get who you're given. This is not strictly true. You can quite often go to nearshoring companies, um, and they will launch a search, and they will work according to your particular requirements, and they will submit you um, profiles of candidates. You will be allowed to interview them, test code test them and get a feeling, most importantly, about whether you want to work with them or not. I mean, when we're doing this, what we propose are not necessarily, or not, not just good software developers, what we want to propose are good employees, people that our clients will want to be working with today in six months, in two years, and also in 10 years. And we have a lot of developers who've been on board for that amount of time, for 10 years and more. So they will propose and you choose. Um, the other, prerequisite I think in this scenario because we're comparing this to in-house developers is that the, the developers that you choose have to be de dedicated to you this of course requires a dedication to them they're part of your team and you have to invest um, as you would in employees who are sitting in your same office to get the kind of loyalty that you need but it works you get in this way you can um, you can achieve high rates of, of retention um, if you, if you break down the mechanics of knowledge transfer, so you have a new colleague, they're starting on the first of next month, and they don't they have the technical skills, but they don't really know your environment, your business domain. Um, there are certain things that you have to do, um, and it is more you, you need to be more disciplined and structured if you're doing this with people who are not sitting in your in your office with you. If if they're in the same office, then you 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 model your way through. Generally, the, the, the process is not that disciplined and structured, um, but it has to be if you're working with, with a partner in a foreign country, and any decent supplier of these services will know exactly how to do that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, a good supplier will have things like in cultural intelligence workshops where they will sort out the differences between um, uh, the differences between perceptions and assumptions in the country where your developers are and where you're working. This is reasonably important to understand. Um, they will train and coach new developers in legal issues so that they know exactly what IP rights mean in the country for which they're developing. Um, they will teach them what GDPR is and what they have to do, what the requirements are for them. And those all will also be documented. Um, and they will also take proactively take on uh, organizational issues. So um, you're never left, you should never be left as a client in a situation where you don't know what's happening, where the roadmap hasn't been drawn for you in order to get this team recruited, onboarded, have the knowledge transfer handled, and get them integrated into your team. Um, the, the third pillar of, of a successful cooperation like that is the one of retention. So we, we've been um, in this market since 2006, and we've managed consistently to achieve over 90% retention. Um, as, as, as it, and, and as everybody knows, the, the, the way to keep people on board is the same whether you're talking about in-house employees or whether you're talking about a team that's based in another country. And this should be something that is understood by the supplier and the client and is shared between both of them. Um, the, the, if, if you take the results of all of the uh, questionnaires that have ever been run on priorities amongst employees, why do they come to work? Um, money generally falls in at number five or number seven. There are a number of others, but the, the one that wins every time is purpose. And this is something that, that we, and not only we, I'm sure, um, we're, we're not the only company to be doing this. We concentrate very heavily on the, giving a sense of purpose together with our clients to our employees. Um, you know, we want to we want to offer them technical uh, technical training during their time with us, educational training, social engagement, the kind of things that make them want to come uh, come to work with us and also stay with our clients. Um, so if, if you look at the whole 
the, the whole package. Um, the, the, the claim that we make, and we can that we can justify this in, in numbers, is that uh, our teams, although they're displaced and they're available in a different part of the world, they are no less productive, no less quality driven than in-house teams. Um, so the, the question about the cake is, yes, you can. It's edible. It's right next door. And you just have to go and get it. Right, that was the, the, the slides that I wanted to present. Um, does anybody have any questions? Thank you, Vincent, for your interesting presentation. Yeah, I can see there is one question in our Q&A session. Which countries are part of Poland is a good source of nearshoring specialist? <laughs> That's not in the scope of today's discussion, but I'll write it down. Don't tell anybody I did this. And, and my answer is um, not, not at all motivated by the fact that we also work there. Um, where, where do I write the answer, Vlad? Because I can only ask a question in here. Pardon? Where do I write? The, 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 there's a question here. Do I have to answer it vocally or can I write yes, it down? Yes, you can answer vocally. Okay, sorry. Then um, I'm, I'm a big fan of two places, Poland and Ukraine, um, when we're talking about this. Um, I've worked ex extensively in both of them. Um, and it's not, I'm, apparently I'm not the only one who has that opinion because if you look at the numbers, they're, they're borne out. The sheer volume of business that's being done in both of those places um, speaks for itself. I talked a little bit earlier about this map where you, you look at the right-hand side being Eastern Europe. The education system, which, which has given these two places this platform, exists also all through the Balkan states, all up into the Baltic states. But um, in the 20 plus years that this industry has been uh, significant and growing, uh, what you find is that these two places uh, have profiled themselves as the, as the hubs. The, I find in both places the attitude of the developers is what you need in um, creative, iterative software development. I'm a big fan of both of those places. That's the answer to question number one. Rotation of talents affecting onshoring company provider. Um, what is what if the problem of rotation? Well, I'm not sure what that means. The, there's a question here. What if the problem of rotation talents? affects onshoring company provider if, if i don't know if somebody has access to a microphone can can say what they mean um, any cultural differences polish need to consider from clients in germany yeah sure there's um there's there's, there's plenty of differences uh, um <laughs> where do i start um Generally, one, let, let me just uh, go talk about experience. We've, we've bought uh, teams from both Poland and Ukraine to, to German clients from time to time. Um, and we asked the German clients, spend time in the evening with them. Like if you go to Poland or if you go to, to, to Ukraine, you mix into the team. At the end of two hours, you're all good friends. At the end of the first day, you go out for a drink and you have a few beers and, and, and get something to eat. And, and that's the way, these are the signs that are, that are, that, that are very welcome to, to the colleagues over there. Um, it's certainly not the case if you go to Denmark. I mean, at Denmark, in, in Denmark, for example, uh, at 3.30, everyone stands up and goes home. I mean, we, we sent the first team of guys from Poland up to some town in Denmark, I don't know which, and, and they thought they didn't, they, <laughs> they wondered what the problem was because all the Danes had gone home. Um, it's perhaps not that. I mean, my experience of, uh, of, of working when, when guys come from Poland over to Germany is that the, there are cultural differences, there are differences in assumption, but they're quickly overcome. I think, I think that the Germans are, are very open um, and, um, and, and, and available for enthusiasm to, to, to make the most of these cultural differences. I can see that the audience is getting more excited and more engaged. There is um, another one question. Probably how big the is the demand in Germany? Yeah, as I, I showed on a slide, it's, it's, it's um, illogically small. It's, it's, a, it's a mystery. 
Um, of, I, I, I only have figures for software development in respect of Warsaw. Um, that was on one of the slides, but um, Scandinavia is, has three times the size of engagement. Uh, Denmark, where my company comes from, is literally 16 times smaller than Germany in terms of population. I don't know how the GDPs stack up against each other. Um, but the, the, the current demand in Germany for nearshoring in Poland is, um, is tragically small when you look at, at the, the, the extent of what's available and the quality of what's available and the size of the problem. And not covering the demand. Yeah, it doesn't come the economy, economy, right? The, the, you know, the, there's there's uh, something in the order of 25 billion euros a year going missing in opportunity costs in the IT industry in Germany. And like literally <laughs> just, just to the right on the map, there's this huge country with tens of thousands of, of really highly skilled specialists um, that are not being made use of. The Danes are there in big numbers, uh, Norwegian, Norway less so. Um, uh, the Swedes tend to use Eastern Europe a lot. America and Canada, as we say in Germany, sowieso. Um, but Germany is a little bit behind the curve. Well, let's see how the situation <laughs> will go as, in the nearest future, said, considering also the, the, the current way is up. unpleasant situation with this pandemic. Yeah. Vincent, I want to thank you for your presentation. It was my pleasure. And dear audience, please meet our next speakers, Magdalena Sharek from Talent Place and Martin Hunter from Curated Content. Magdalena is from Poland and Martin is from Canada. Vincent, you told all our secrets. Shh. <laughs> Magdalena, all yours. You're on mute, Magda. Yes, Magdalena. Thank you, Martin. Yes, thank mm. you. Sorry. Uh, hello, hello. Uh, I'm Magdalena Sharek from Talent Place. Uh, let me maybe share my screen so there's going to be just a second. Does it work? Sorry. Okay. It's fine. You can see the presentation. You're good, Magda. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Sorry, I just got some technical issue. Okay. No, it should work. Um, okay. Uh, I'm here with, with Martin Hunter, uh, already introduced by that. Uh, Martin is from Curated Content. This is uh, one of the companies we're, we're work, working with. And we're going to talk, I'm going to talk a bit uh, about uh, IT talent shortage and some ideas to win this battle. And later I'm going to tell a bit more about our cooperation with, with Curated Content, what, what we're doing here. Uh, so first, I'm going to tell a bit more about Talent Place, and then I will add a bit more to what uh, what Vincent said in his presentation, uh, a bit more about IT talent pool in Poland, and then something about the, the IT recruitment and how we can handle it. And then, as I said before, I'm going to talk about our cooperation with curated content. So in Talent Place, we are uh, we are a recruitment based uh, on community, which means that we are not a regular recruitment agen agency. We are cooperating with a huge network of recruiters, and this lets us to get to the candidate quicker. Uh, currently, with our network, uh, counting that an average recruiter has 700 contacts, 
that can vary. It's probably a bit more usually, but we can get to 100,000 people. So this means that when we start a process, we can already engage a recruiter who has done this process previously, similar project, and has a network of candidates that can uh, usually quickly apply for the project. So this is how we work. And we are cooperating with companies from all over the world, uh, for example, uh, from USA and Canada, but also from Europe. Those, those companies on the, on the slide are mostly uh, startups and IT companies uh looking mostly for software developers uh in poland but not only we are also looking in in neighboring countries we we also look for developers uh, in uh, belarus in lativa um, but also in other countries so uh, but we're mostly of course focused on poland and as you can see, I don't believe we've uh, cooperated with any German co uh, company. So this is what also what Vincent said, that uh, that even though it's a big country with a, a huge shortage for IT people, uh, they, they don't look uh, much in, in Poland. And the, the pool here is really big. We've chose some uh, exemplary, uh, exemplary technologies to show, uh, for example, JavaScript developer, there are, uh, are almost 100, one and a half hundred thousand people uh, with, with these skills in Poland, most of them in Warsaw, and the salaries, of course, are much lower than in Western Europe. Uh, with React Native, there's there's around 3,000 people we've identified with this, uh, this title. With uh, Python, there's almost 50,000 people using Python. And here you can see some salaries depending on the form of cooperation as well for, for Python developers. And the last, no, sorry, not last, but definitely the most popular technology recently in Poland is uh, Java. We have, we have a huge poll of Java and uh, the salaries in Java, in Java are, are raising because there's a huge demand for Java. Uh, and PHP, that's not such a big poll. It's around 5,000 people we've identified for, for PHP. And this is something about benefits. Uh, recently with, with, with COVID, We've noticed that people are looking more into stability and, and this is something that when the company doesn't have a good employer branding and doesn't offer much benefits, they have to compensate with, with the higher salary. So, so offering benefits and building employer branding is definitely a good way to save, uh, save some money on salaries because uh, that's how it currently works. I would say that the the standard package used to be a medical a medical package plus a sport card, but with with the COVID and the the gyms closed, companies started to look into exchanging this gym membership to something else that employees can use. Uh, but the other other important benefits for for developers in Poland, uh, well, definitely flexible work hours, especially if we are talking with with companies from uh, U.S. or Canada. That's something that's uh, very often asked whether people will have to work in in U.S. time, which would mean that they will start around three or four p.m. and work until late. So definitely flexible work hours. Um, Bring your own device policy. Well, that's I'd say more popular in startups, and some people find it a benefit. Some people just the opposite. So this this is a bit <laughs> difficult benefit. Uh, Co-financing of foreign la language learning that became more and more popular, especially in uh, companies uh, from Nordics from from other European countries, 
that's a, a great plus when you can learn the, the language of the company. Uh, team building trips and outings. Well, that's definitely post right now, but but it's it's very important with uh, with um, especially a company working remote. Uh, speaking of which, remote working it has. It used to be a huge benefit before COVID, and now it turned into something that people are expecting that there will be some amount of remote work. Uh, Work-life balance policy, uh, development paths, uh, some trainings, relocation, as uh, relocation assistance, uh, subsidized meals. Uh, what else? Relocation packages, especially for people from different countries or even different cities. It, it's also uh, a thing. Uh, trainings, uh, separate room for relaxation for, for non-remote companies. Um, cell phone, uh, holiday or Christmas gifts for children. Uh, oh, the next one is really, really important for uh, for developers. It's co-financing of exams to obtain professional certificates. Uh, so this is definitely what, what IT people are looking for. Uh, co-financing of travel costs. Well, that's also froze for now. Uh, paid days off, uh, I mean, on B2B contract. This is something uh, that's becoming more and more popular. Uh, before it was uh, only, of course, on the contract of employment, this was guaranteed. But uh, right now, people are more and more expecting paid days off when they are uh, working on B2B contract. Uh, participation in conferences, Christmas gifts, and uh, Apple devices. And I left co-financing of postgraduate and MBA studies for last because that's a, a good benefit to keep people in the company because it's usually connected with signing some loyalty agreement and uh, and guaranteeing that the, the, the person will stay in the company for a long time. So. This is worth considering. Uh, the forms of cooperation for, for finding IT talents uh, is traditional recruitment project model, so hiring and recruitment agency. But we also offer, for example, HR business partner leasing. So this is the, the advisor that helps the company um, with, with all activities not only recruitment related but mostly employer branding but also onboarding processes uh, basically set, setting HR processes it's uh, very useful in startups in startups that don't want to hire their own HR uh, and recruiter leasing this is traditional RPO model where uh, where the recruiter works for for the company and IT body leasing and IT team leasing is a great way when the project is short and it needs to start quickly uh, because you get a ready team or developer and you don't have to worry about finding the next project for them when it ends. And training on IT recruitment in Poland. This is, this is training for recruiters that would like to, to become IT recruiters. Uh, training about technology, uh, about sources of candidates, where to look for them, how to talk to, to IT people, uh, to understand the IT language, basically. Uh, and here's, here's the, the case study. Uh, so Curated Content uh, is a company founded in 2015, uh, DNA Mobile Group. Uh, it is headquartered in Austin and they are mostly developing mobile games uh, and they have an office in, in, in Poland uh, with uh, several Android developers, iOS developers and we've been a partner for Curated Content. Uh, uh, in recruitment, 
for example, for Android developer, for QA testers, uh, we are currently also looking for product owner, for iOS developer, for office manager, and we've also uh, recruited a Golang developer. Uh, so we've been using direct search for all these processes and we've started to work together uh, in between uh, February and March. So we've already had a few placements in curated content. Those people have already started working and they are, they are developing games here in Poland. And definitely, well, the difference between working with US companies and German is, is there is no language barrier because I believe that this might be one of the, the issues why, uh, why there is not such a big uh, boom for candidates from Poland in Germany because of the language barrier, because it's way easier to find an English speaking developers, obviously, than, than German. There's basically a shortage of German speaking people in, in Poland, also for customer service and, and other branches. Uh, so I don't know, Martin, could you could you say something about uh, our cooperation here? <laughs> the and hopefully I'm not going to offend anybody. I am not a very big proponent of traditional uh, recruitment strategies. Um, I think it's important that. Uh, we outsource and fraction use the, that fractional component of an HR partner. And that is what Magda and I have done is being able to touch base on a regular basis, not just to recruit, but also improve your HR component as well. So um, I prefer transformational versus transactional. How can we work as a team? So Magda and I have a daily huddle, for example, that uh, we connect on a daily basis to see how is it going, what do we need to do? Oh, there's a health and safety requirement that needs to get done. So that partnership is more valuable because we get to know each other well and without having to spend a lot of time up front defining the culture, defining the job description. Magda knows what kind of uh, people and uh company representative that we want to have within the organization. So that long-term relationship is much more transformational for the organization than a single source transactional, find me three guys. You know, there's other components, you know, ensuring that we've got some uh, form of guarantee for 90 days because it doesn't take long. We hired a QA tester in Magda. He was with us a whole 24 hours. Um, so those guys and girls are also out there where they go for the biggest buck as well. But ultimately, I love working with Polish and, and the Vincent kind of gave up the secret. Poland is full of good hearted, hardworking folk. Um, sometimes the conversation in regards to understanding the culture and language, that's a big key. And uh, spending time with Magda as well breaks down that barrier. So yes, working with Magda and Talent Place in a fractional HR role, including recruitment has been um, our method of choice. Thank you very much, Martin, for kind words. So I'm just gonna go to, to the conclusions. Uh, and those are some ideas to, to win this battle on IT talent shortage. Uh, well, uh, obviously, as both I and Vincent already said, Poland has an experience and wide talent pool of candidates in, in IT sector. Uh, and competition is high, of course, in, in this sector, especially now post-COVID. So besides... Um, Besides a good offer, uh, a good uh, IT recruiter has a has a wide network. So this is what can help. Uh, well, programmer salaries in Poland are uh, way lower than in Germany and most of other Western European countries. 
And uh, most recruitment agencies in Poland are based on the success fee model, but there are a few that offer more, uh, more qualitative and flexible forms of cooperation. And so, um, definitely the word that needs stress here is uh, quality. This is this is something that that talent place is most focused on the the quality of our cooperation with with our customers, and uh, this is something that I've already said that uh, that definitely building a, a strong uh, strong employing or employer branding and benefits that's something that can help attracting employees and uh, offering a bit maybe not offering but less compensating that with salaries so this is something that we also we also help our customers with it's building their their brand on on polish uh, job market uh so thank you very much so are there any questions okay i can uh, mm -hmm. Dear Magdalena, dear Martin, yes, I see that there are two questions. Yes. The yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Let's see. So what is the internal process in international enterprises companies as they identify their needs and explore near sharing solutions? Uh, well, I'm not sure what's uh, how it works uh, inter uh, inside the, the 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 company or enterprise, but uh, our cooperation model looks like uh, this: that we uh, we first always meet with our customer, we identify their needs, and then we suggest the the sourcing strategy, and we are based on on quality. So we always meet with uh, with, with 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 our clients. Uh, weekly or even daily it depends of, of the needs and uh, we can uh, we provide always with uh, the candidate profiles and well, the difference between nearshoring and remote uh, recruitment outsourcing will be definitely the the distance uh, mostly between uh, between countries uh, well we are also working with as already said with state with canada which uh, which can be defined as nearshoring uh, what i would recommend is understanding time zones so especially in the tech industry when you've got sprint planning and delivery uh your front end your back end teams might be hindered in your sprints if time zones if you have to wait a couple of hours and that is our case um, being on the west coast of uh, north america and in poland creates a gap to which understanding and that's why we're moving most of our american resources to poland to streamline and build efficiencies within the organization. Uh, can I apply as talent to talent place while I am still a student uh, beginner? Uh, well, I'm not sure if you're asking to apply as a talent recruiter or uh, or to, to be connected with other companies. If this is the first option, we are currently working on some development plans for juniors who want to become IT recruiters or regular re recruiters in future. Uh, so yes, of course. And uh, well, I believe we have some offers for juniors as well, and you can check this on on our website uh, in in careers okay are you see magdalena and martin there is already one request <laughs> for your company <laughs> to join your company okay wonderful so thank you very much for your presentation and thank you see you all speakers and audience on our floor session Here we go. How do we go back?